It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I, I really, really want to win this. Really, really, really up for the challenge. This is one tough competition. If I can do well at Master Chef, it would mean it would mean the world. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six amateur cooks all want to become a top chef. But only one will get through to the quarter-final. Master Chef, and this is one tough cookery competition. Right now, the invention test. One great plate of food for a group of ingredients they haven't seen before. I want bags of flavour. I don't want to see anything that looks sloppy and uncared for. Now, we want one plate of food from the ingredients in front of you. 50 minutes, let's cook. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of the ingredients in front of them, which include lamb, tomatoes, feta cheese, couscous, mushrooms, mint, spinach and watermelon. What style of cook are you, Scott? Quite a rustic. I like just good ingredients, simply done. Do you believe you're good enough to win this, Scott? I think with a bit of help and a push in the right direction, I think I can do something, yeah. Painter and decorator Scott is desperate to hang up his overalls. I want to stop decorating. I want to, do, I want to be in the cooking industry. And once I get in the kitchen and cook more and more, I, I believe that it's, I will just excel. I rented MasterChef to take my, my kind of dreams further um, and to shut my friends up, really. Who, uh, who put you up to this, Becky? Friends. Friday night. Oh, you're cooking fantastic. We just bring the wine and turn up. Do they tell you you're fantastic before they've opened the wine or when the bottle's <laughs> empty? <laughs> That's cheeky. Both. <laughs> A lot more after the wine. <laughs> You've had ten minutes. Lauren, how long have you been cooking for? I've been cooking for about two years. It's, it's not just the experience that you need, you'll learn that along the way. As long as you've got that charisma, after the right attitude to go forward, you'll be fine. 21-year-old Lauren is confident that her inexperience won't stand in the way of her cooking dream. My goal is to hopefully get into a kitchen and work my way up. I, I really would like to be a head chef. Ben, if you have a style, what style would it be? Um, I think it's like a, a fusion between the really hearty side of French cooking, but also modern presentation. I'm half French, yeah, so... Allez le bleu. Voilà. Ben believes his French heritage will give him an advantage in the competition. I just think I've got a good natural flair for cooking. It's very rare that I cook something and it comes out inedible or, or not good. Ladies and gentlemen, you are halfway there. Why are you here? This is what I do. I enjoy doing this. I, 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 I love my cooking. I like um, seafood. Um, I do a lot of scuba diving. I always have a good stock of my own seafood. Wow. Um, and, and that's the sort of things I like. Dorset-based Matt wants to involve his family in his cooking dream. My family and I, we've made a lifestyle decision. At some point, we want to have our own business. Our dream would be to have a cafe. Um, I like cooking Italian. I cook a lot of seafood. Something that blends the two of those well. Ladies and gentlemen, you have only ten minutes left. Mel hopes her adventurous cooking style will make her stand out. I'm not afraid to experiment. Um, sometimes that's perhaps my detriment, um, but hopefully it will show that I've got a lot of talent. Tell me, why Master Chef? I've reached that natural crossroads, and this is time to follow my dream. You've only got one minute. One minute. Step 
away. Time's up. Finished. Twenty-one-year-old Lauren is pinning her hopes on lamb with vegetable couscous and tomatoes. Your lamb is overcooked. It doesn't excite me. Uh, it's all a bit flat. I'm not getting anything from the couscous at all. You've got to pack more flavours yeah. into these things. You're pretty upset about this, aren't you? I am. Devastated. Absolutely devastated. Painter and decorator Scott hopes to climb the culinary ladder with his Moroccan-style lamb and roasted vegetable couscous. The lamb's slightly overcooked. I love the sweetness of the vegetables inside the couscous. Well-seasoned lamb, well-cooked couscous. I think it's a good start. Ben has strayed away from his French roots cooking teriyaki lamb, rice salad with broad beans and watermelon topped with fried bread. Lamb and watermelon is not... No. It's not a combination that I'm going to rush back to, <laughs> I can tell you that, Ben. No, I, I, no, I can see that. It's all extremely confused. Matt is showcasing his culinary skill by making fettuccine with a tomato and mushroom sauce. Uh, come in here, first round. Cut strips of perfectly fine uh, pasta. Oh, it's well done. Thanks. Very impressive because your pasta is soft but yet got a crunch to it. Uh, I've got to say, Matt, I like it. I like it a lot. I like your intent. Thanks. Dinner party cook Becky is banking on lamb with couscous and a tomato salad. Couscous is completely bland. It needs a huge punch of flavour coming from somewhere. I think the lamb is cooked nicely, but there's very little else I can reflect upon. Experimental cook Mel has made flatbread served with spicy lamb and tomato salsa. I really, really like the flavour of that tomato um, salsa. I also like the flavour of the lamb, it's well spiced. For this stage of the competition, Melanie, I think that is really seriously clever stuff. I'm so pleased and relieved. Good flavours, good textures, it doesn't really get any better. Thank you very much. We'll make a decision as soon as we can, I promise you. Off you go. I think we've got some great cooks today. I'm really inspired. Melanie, she cooked the lamb to perfection. She made little flatbreads. We both loved it. Good honour. OK, so Melanie's in. Can we talk about Matt? The guy obviously cooks a lot. That was really good pasta, really good fettuccine. That's a lot of promise anyway. If he's not a great cook, I will eat my shoe. Yeah, 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 he's in as well. Listen, can I quickly mention Ben? I'm really surprised, the guy. He said what I really want is the big, rustic flavours of rural France. I thought, yeah, good on you. I was salivating. And then gave us teriyaki watermelon. Now, <laughs> where did that come from? You know, trying to cook something French in that period of time with those ingredients was, was, would have been a mistake. Ben goes home. What we have now is three lamb and couscous dishes by Scott, Lauren and Becky. Out of the three of them, I think Lauren is the least inspiring. I think Lauren's inexperience did show today, and, you know, the lamb was dry. Uh, the couscous actually had no flavour at all, and the only flavour was left with those chopped tomatoes. Lauren's got to go home. I think Becky cooked her lamb beautifully. But it really was some couscous with very little flavour, a piece of lamb and then some sliced tomatoes. I don't know if I've done enough to get through to the next round, cos there's some really, really good competition. Scott roasting those veg 
to put through the couscous was the right idea. But Scott's lamb was overcooked. I've never overcooked anything. Never. I just, that's the only thing that's done me. Everything else went to plan, to be honest. I actually think their dishes are comparable. One messed up the lamb, the other one messed up the couscous. Really tough one to cook. You know the rules, three of you are staying and three of you are going home. Arnie, you're cooking tomorrow. Well done. Ben. Lauren. Sorry, guys, you're leaving us. We only have three places. Matt, damn fine pasta. You're cooking tomorrow. Well done. Thank you. Scott. Or Becky. Sorry, Becky, you're leaving us. Congratulations, Scott. Yay! Yeah, it's Oh, come on now. <laughs> I'm absolutely delighted. I'm just really, really, really happy. I think I'm I'm a good chef. I think I'm getting better. But I think to win it, I've got to be a great chef, and there's a long way to go yet. <laughs> I never like this. <laughs> yeah, just really good. Really, really good. These guys want to change their lives, and tomorrow they're going to their first professional kitchen. This will separate the men from the boys. This will tell us if they really want to do it. They're going to have to work tomorrow harder and faster than they've ever worked before in their life. One quarter-final place, three very exciting cooks. Day two, and the contestants arrive at the upmarket Charlotte Street Hotel. They'll be cooking in the hotel's very popular Oscar restaurant and bar, run by head chef Brad Tyndall. Hi, guys. Uh, we've got 100 covers for lunch. Got to be sharp, ready for action. Let's go. After two hours of preparation, the clock strikes 12 and service begins. OK, team, wakey, wakey, heads up. Check on Samaj. Two duck roll, please. Yes, chef. Mel is up first. She's making Vietnamese spring rolls. They contain eight different ingredients and must be hand rolled to order. Come on, Mel. Let's go. These first checks, we have to hit hard. Yes, okay? chef. With no cooking involved, Mel must be sure her presentation is perfect. OK, this is no good. We need to start again. The edge of the plate is for the customer. It's not okay, for us, chef. so it's got to go inside. Nothing on the outside. Yes, I hate chef. that. One set of pasta. Yes, chef. Painter and decorator Scott is in charge of fresh pasta with bresseola and spring greens. Olive oil, salt, pepper, chilli. Let's go today. Yeah? Yes, chef. Here we go. Cool. But under the pressure of his first order, he's forgotten a vital ingredient. Are you done? Is it finished? Done, yes. You sure? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, not. you're not. OK. He's left out the herbs. Put this back in the pan with the herbs. Toss it off, please. Okay, I just want to get everything right. I just want to turn it around and just do it. Just do it right. I don't want to be <laughs> up all the time. Yeah. Cheers, my yeah. friend. Check on Samaj. Going straight away, please. Two sea bream. That's you, big man. Yes, chef. Seafood lover Matt should be in his element cooking a dish of sea bream with chamula, a North African marinade. But can he cook the fish to the restaurant's high standards? There's a little bit too much colour on here, OK? Don't want burnt flavour, I want a caramel flavour. Yes, really sir. important. It's halfway through service, and Mel needs to impress after her shaky start. OK, Mel, let's start to push now, please. Three duck chef! He's going to like these ones, I think. I hope. Finally, look at that. Lovely straight lines, excellent job. You finally Thanks got it together. Sir. The kitchen is now in full swing, and Matt's fish dish is proving extremely popular. There's six bream all day, so you need to get another three sea bream in the pan straight away. Yes, chef. But under the pressure of cooking six orders at once, Matt makes a mistake. Right, stop, stop, yes, stop. Chef. You've broken it, okay? That's no good. Concentrate on one thing at a time. 
Gently, gently. Okay, it's a piece of fish. It's not a football, okay? That's what it's all about. However, he proves to be a quick learner, and his next attempt is perfect. Sexy, about time. Meanwhile, Scott is loving the pace and is thriving in the heat of service. How many pass all day long, chef? You have five set pass set all day. Five. Toss, toss, toss. Finally, Scott, it's all come together. Beautiful. He's got his plate up. OK, so, yep, well done. We're there. Fantastic. Beautiful. Look at that. It's excellent. That's going to be table 403 in a hurry. With a hectic lunch service over and 120 covers served, what did head chef Brad make of our three cooks? Matt was really, really good. He was pretty cool. He's pretty calm and collected. He did chop a fish, which is no good, but otherwise, pretty good job. I think I coped with the pressure. Um, I mucked up a few times at the beginning, but I think I kind of pulled it together. I thought Mel did really, really well. She was a bit meek and mild to begin with. Towards the end, she got right into it. This has really focused me um, to really want to give this 100%. Scott was great. He had a bit of a slow start. But then he found his feet and he started running, which was excellent. I think as the service went on, I kind of, I think he's the other improved and was more efficient. If I had to have someone back, it'd have to be Scott. He had the enthusiasm, he had the excitement, and he got right into it. And the food going on the plate looked fantastic. And that's what we're after at the end of the day. It's now back to MasterChef HQ, where the contestants must cook their own two-course menu. At the end of this, we will have one quarter finalist. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you the best of luck. One hour. Let's cook. Yesterday, Matt sailed through the first round, making perfect fettuccine. But he struggled at times in the pro kitchen. Can he now regain his confidence with his own two courses? What are your two dishes? I'm doing a soda bread with a, um, a scallop chowder, um, and then second course, um, a rhubarb crumble with a dash of whiskey. Why? Because it tastes good. What is this you're serving us up here? It's what I like to eat. You know, I love fresh seafood. I love deep flavours. What does this competition actually mean to you, Matt? If I can win it, it just it, it brings me forward a good few years to where I want to be running this cafe. It's a great thing for my family, for my kids to see me doing. It's all benefit. Scallop child absolutely loves seafood, so that better be very, very good with soda bread. Possibly my favourite of all puddings ever. And he's putting whiskey. Well, we'll see what the whiskey brings to him. You've got half an hour left, just under. Experimental cook Mel wowed the judges in the first round with her spicy lamb on flatbreads. Can she now secure her quarter-final spot with her two more adventurous dishes? Mel, what are you going to cook for us? I'm making you um, a hot and sour soup, followed by pork belly and scallops on um, cauliflower puree with some Granny Smith chips. What is it about this, this fusion uh, inventiveness that, that appeals so much? Because it's different and I don't think there's anything wrong with creating new things and new ideas that you've not seen in recipe books yet. Can you realise your dream, Mel? Um, I already am realising it now, being here. It's great. I love it. Mel's style is experimental. It is fusion. I wonder if Mel's able to deliver the definitive flavours that are needed in those dishes to make them beautiful, because that's not easy. Painter and decorator Scott struggled to make it through the invention test, but came out on top in the pro kitchen. Can he continue to impress with his classic two-course menu? What are you going to cook for us? You're looking at maybe quite a simple food, but just a classic French onion soup and some runner beans, some leeks with some clams and finish with just a nice bit of cotton top. You think your uh, food today is uh, simple, why? It is simple, but I believe if you cook it right, then that's the art of it. We've just not loads and loads of ingredients. I'm quite capable of just putting something together that will just taste as good as you'd get anywhere else. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. The classic dishes. French onion soup, cod and clams with some greens, it should be delicious. This is great food, as long as he does pack flavouring like he says he can. You have three 
three minutes and three minutes only. Scott is pinning his quarter-final hopes on classic French onion soup with Gruyere croutons, followed by cod with clams and spring greens. I don't dislike it at all, but it could probably do with a little bit more flavour, depth of flavour. No, I'm very, very happy with that. <laughs> very, very happy. The sweetness of the onions and the bread giving it real, real body, and then a tang off the cheese to finish it. That is food I like to eat. Let's move on. It's a very well balanced, very well cooked, very well conceived, very, very delicious dish. Thanks very much. I like your style. I like your food. That is soft, really moist, Big flavours, that's good food, mate. How much do you want this competition? Massively. I'll cook good food and you like what I cook and I can, there's better than that. Experimental cook Mel has created a hot and sour Thai prawn soup, followed by pork belly and scallops served with a cauliflower puree, a pea puree and Granny Smith chips. It's got chilli heat. It's got the crunch of sympathetically cooked vegetables. I like it a lot. Nice bowl of soup. Um, not bursting with, you know, huge amounts of flavour. Let's move on. Let's leave the soup and bring in your pork and scallops. The scallop is completely lost in that triumvirate of pork, mm. pea and cauliflower. Nice ideas. Strangely enough, I quite like the sour and sweetness of that Granny Smith with the pork and the scallop. I do feel, though, you've got one too many ingredients on your plate. It's a brave attempt. And the way you wanted a plate shows somebody who really cares about their food. You look disappointed. I am, and I think it's a shame, really. Matt's dream of building a new life for his family is resting on homemade soda bread filled with scallop and monkfish chowder, followed by a rhubarb and whiskey crumble. The scallops are lovely and soft because they haven't been overcooked. The depth of flavour is intense. I think it's a really, really lovely tasting dish. But I don't necessarily agree with the presentation. This is good food. You've got sweet scallop, you've got meaty monkfish. It is thick and juicy. It's well flavoured. I, look, I really, really like that dish. Obviously, this means a bit to you, Matt. Yes, John. Does it mean a life change? Is that the whole idea? Yeah, absolutely. From chowder to crumble. It's got sweetness and it's got sourness. That is a very good crumble. Thank you. Very, very good crumble indeed. You get sweetness and then you get an undercurrent of heat of whiskey. It's absolutely delightful, Matt. Can you tell me what you're feeling here? Um, it means a lot to me. I've been wanting to come on this for a long time. Please, take a step outside, and we'll call you back as soon as we've made our decision. Well done, mate. <laughs> it's your fault. You stuck I'm with me. <laughs> That was cooking of the highest order. Three people who have tried so hard to show us that they want it. And this is what this competition is all about. Can we talk about Melanie for a moment? The soup, I thought was okay. It didn't have the sort of real bounce I wanted to have. I found it sweet and uh, citric and spicy and I liked it. But I found the main course very confused. 
There's too much going on there. You lost the beauty of the scallop. You lost the beauty of that pork because of all the other flavours that were in there. The scallop dish was a gamble. Um, it didn't pay off. <laughs> Although interesting, it's nowhere near the calibre of those two guys. I think, actually, Melanie is the weakest and we should actually knock her out right now and debate the two boys. Let's talk about Scott. The soup, I tell you what, what a great attempt. I love that French onion soup with those big, fat, cheesy croutons. It was delicious. Then, that main course, with the rich sauce and the, and the clams, it was absolutely delicious. And I love his style. I love that honest big bowl of soup. I love that honest plate of food of that, that cod. Beautifully cooked vegetables, finished with butter. I mean, that is great, great food. I cook that food all the time. I enjoy cooking it, and I know they enjoy eating it, so that's... I'm pleased. I think what Matt is doing is very exciting. He's come in here and baked a whole loaf of soda bread, hollowed it out and filled it with the most divine chowder. I mean, that was lovely. Wonderful soft scallops. That is good restaurant quality chowder. It's something I put a lot of myself into. It means a lot to me. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy my cooking. I'd love to do something more with it. Then he delivers one of the best crumbles I've tasted in a long time with a whiskey undercurrent of heat and a bit of tang. I mean, that is great cooking. It ticked all the boxes and more. All the boxes. It was fantastic. Here's the difficulty. Because actually, Matt is cooking beautiful food, really well made, well conceived, well thought out. We love him. Scott, cooking really good food, really well conceived, and we love him. How do we do this? You know, choosing one from those two, that, that's not fair. The fact is, it is a competition, and we've got to find ourselves one winner. So, so unfair. Well done for making this judging decision so terribly difficult. Our quarter finalist is Matt. Congratulations. You know, it means a lot to me, it means a lot to my family. I am an emotional guy. It's it's something that I don't often let out. In this kind of world, it's, it's, it's about doing something you're passionate about. So I've got to let it out. I will never, ever forget this experience. I'm probably going... <laughs> I didn't do enough, did I? That's it. You there? Yes, I am. What? What? I made it through. <gasps> no? <laughs> Matt will be back for the quarterfinal, where he'll face three other exceptional cooks.